for a session presented by Flyer Labs. Please welcome founder and CEO of Flyer Labs, Alex Manns, in conversation with Skift X head of studio, Jeremy Cressman. Alex, thank you for joining us again today. Happy to have you. Thank um, you for having us. Set the stage. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence in the airline industry. Um, we know the industry's had a strong recovery this year, but of course, there's all kinds of volatility out there, whether that's labor volatility, demand volatility from customers, and I think that complicates decision making, right? So I want to talk about how AI can help airlines make some of these decisions more strategically um, and do it using real time data. Um, I want to start with a poll, actually. I want to know what those of you in the audience and online actually think about artificial intelligence, how it's going to impact the airline industry. Let's see if we can pull up that poll question for just a second, if we can. Maybe we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, Alex, why don't we start first? Um, Flyer, of course, specializes in applying AI and deep learning to helping airlines optimize their commercial performance, right? Um, help us understand why AI is such an improvement over the way that the industry is doing this now, right? I mean, yep. we already have revenue management functions. Like, what is different here exactly? Yeah, so the main reason why Flyer has been growing very quickly is because um, what used to be tried and true no longer is. Uh, if you look at airlines, um, things like year over year forecasts or year over year averages, just don't hold up anymore uh, to guide your decisions going forward. Um, and on top of that, the airline industry is, is characterized by a lot of noise in its data or a lot of sparsity. Right? If you have a single frequency from A to B, a single booking um, from day 89 to 88 before departure doesn't tell you much about the final outcome. Mm -hmm. So where AI is incredibly powerful, is it is able to consume vast amounts of data, mm -hmm. correlate that data across a very complex network like that of an airline, and better understand how a, even the small change uh, anywhere in that network might correlate to a different outcome, whether that is a revenue forecast or a load factor forecast or um, a pricing decision. Mm -hmm. And where legacy systems much more try to solve these problems by layering rules engines on top of rules engines that rely on human subjectivity, sure. AI can catch that contextual understanding directly from the data. Right. So it's kind of like this elaborate if-then kind of chart, and that doesn't always work in today's environment is the sense I'm getting. Um, so that's a good introduction to why AI is more effective for this commercial optimization. But my sense is that you need to use your data differently to do this, right? So, you know, airlines have all of this data that they gather, operational data, data about their customers. How do you structure that in a way so that you can actually take advantage of these types of AI-driven insights you're describing? Yeah, so while I think airlines have gotten fairly good at managing their kind of back of the house, fleet management, crew management, ground handling, type data, maintenance data. Um, the commercial data within an airline still sits all over the place. It sits across internet booking engines, loyalty systems, payment solutions, um, marketing engines, uh, pricing engines. And most airlines haven't done a very good job at actually bringing the data together in one place. That's really where you have to start. And this is one of the reasons why more traditional revenue management and forecasting uh, still really just relies on booking and inventory as inputs and then right. leverages humans for everything else. So it's really important that airlines try and bring together um, all that commercial data in one place. Your mm. bookings, your searches, your competitive information, your events, your holidays, promotions, everything you can imagine. And that's exactly what we do um, at Flyer as the very first step of any engagement. Bring all, all that commercial data together in, in one single place. So you're looking a lot more sources of inputs to help you make these decisions rather than the traditional functions. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see if that poll question is ready. I would love to get a sense from our audience if that's available. Not yet, huh? OK. <laughs> there we go. Um, so uh, the question was, which of the following uses for AI will have the biggest impact on revenue performance? And our options here about total revenue optimization across fares, ancillaries, and third-party pricing delivering more personalized offers and experiences, or uh, enabling better long-term business planning. So if you have a second, take, uh, take the poll. It'll be through our mobile app, and for those of you online, through the interface. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, so we've talked so far, Alex, about this back end, you know, getting your data right, how this can work more effectively. Uh, I'm curious what impact using AI can actually have on customers, though more on the front end. So talk about that and any kind of results you may have. 
Yeah, so the beauty of having your data in one place and then unleashing artificial intelligence or neural networks on that data is that it becomes very easy to define what is called a loss function or an output that I'm trying to optimize for. And that can be what is the right price, but it can also be what should I be selling. Mm -hmm. So this exact same architecture, this exact same technology is also able to um, solve for questions like what should I be selling? What should right. my ratio between points and cash be to maximize my revenue outcome? Sure. Um, which flight should I show at the top in order to drive conversion or to stimulate lower performing flights? So it's the exact same architecture that is able to answer both what should I sell, how should I sell it, and how should I price it? Mm. So there's this new layer of being able to deliver something more personalized really to a customer based on what we're learning on the back end, if I'm getting that right. Yes. Um, actually, if we take a look at the poll results that have come in so far, we actually see, you know, how are we gonna use AI for aviation and what's gonna have the biggest impact? Um, 60, almost 62% of you said delivering more personalized, customized offers and experiences. So I think that speaks to that personalization point actually bringing this into the front end conversation, a merchandising conversation, right? Any reactions to this? Well, there's a reason why we acquired a company called Newshore. Uh, it's an internet booking engine because we saw that we're helping all these airlines decide what to sell and how to price things, right. but the legacy booking engine and reservation system infrastructure often doesn't allow you to actually put that in front of the customer right. or then fulfill it in the back end. So we actually made a few acquisitions uh, to allow us to uh, not just make the decision, but actually make the decision real in front of a customer. Mm. So we're actively investing in that area. Yeah, and especially as ancillaries become a bigger source of revenue for the airline industry, it seems like it's gonna be increasingly important. So Alex, beyond just technology, it seems like there's a business aspect of this, just thinking about how you're structuring your airline business around some of these considerations. What should airlines be taking into account when pursuing you know, this more digital first strategy for commercial optimization using AI? Yeah, so traditionally, different commercial functions within an airline are somewhat siloed, right? The marketing team stimulates demand over here, the scheduling team figures out where to put capacity, the pricing team files fares, and then the inventory team manages seat availability against those fares. Right. Um, what we're seeing is, as you bring data together in one place, and as you create more accurate forecasts for revenue and for demand, you have the opportunity to actually provide this as a ground truth, a common ground truth, across these different commercial functions, mm -hmm. right? So a final load factor can not just inform what revenue management does, it can also actually help scheduling teams determine much earlier, mm -hmm. where should I increase or decrease my frequencies? It helps marketing teams determine where should I spend money based on high yields but lower final, revenue, final load factor expectations or vice versa. So what we're seeing, and the reason why we call our platform a revenue operating system, is because we're seeing a unification of these previously siloed commercial functions um, around a single source of truth and a single set of technologies. And I would think it would even impact the types of team structures that you have, right? You know, we traditionally think about like an e-commerce function, uh, you know, revenue management function, a marketing function. Does that change as a result of using AI then? No, I think those functions still very much exist because uh, you know, capacity and scheduling has a lot of connection to the operation and marketing to your distribution channels. Um, but what we do see is that the role of the analyst, so to say, the glue that provides this fidelity of information to these different commercial functions, that role is very quickly evolving uh, to truly become that glue between these functions and keep people aligned much more naturally and much more natively than they are today. Mm, okay. Um, looking forward, how do you see AI-driven solutions changing airlines operations or business decision making in the future? Um, do you think there's like a larger mindset shift that needs to happen in the industry for them to embrace this fully, or do you think we're there right now? What do you think? Yeah, well, so, so I'll, I'll read the question as like adoption, right? How do you drive adoption of this? And uh, I think there are three parts where we ourselves structure our business around. So first, there's the new technologies, mm -hmm. right? The ability yeah. to let go of the past, to the clean sheet design that is, of course, compatible with your back office systems, um, but that allows you to kind of unconstrain the front of the house, everything above the reservation system. So that's one. Yeah. The second part is the engagement models, mm -hmm. right? You need to have a real partnership between a technology vendor and the actual airline and the people at the airline 
um, uh, direct engagement on the product roadmap, uh, very, very quick iteration, right? So we ship updates to our products uh, weekly or biweekly. And then the third piece is commercial models, mm -hmm. right? So how do you enable airlines to justify what procurement believes is a switching cost or a high switching cost? And the best way to do that is by creating a net neutral business model, right? So uh, where you can offer the airline to adopt the technology at effectively zero cost, prove the performance, provide the business uh, use case um, and justification, and then enable that cutover. Mm -hmm. So it's technology uh, engagement and commercial models. Okay, so it sounds like we're getting there, but there's still some steps to be taken and we're figuring it out. A absolutely, like uh, people always say that airlines are very much built around managing the metal, right? So when 95% of your business is focused on managing airplanes, managing right. crews, managing um, uh, uh, pilots and, and, and ground equipment, um, weather and everything around it, then right. it's very easy to kind of underinvest in the technology that's the front of the house. Um, and we're helping airlines do that. Right. So we, we've raised close to half a billion dollars in the last three years alone. Um, we've got over 20 airlines on our platform um, as customers, and um, we're helping them kind of change that front of the house from what to sell to how to price mm -hmm. and from uh, marketing decisions to uh, scheduling and planning decisions mm -hmm. on a single ground source of truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned uh, the investment to date in the company. I, I know you've also made several acquisitions in the past year growing beyond your roots in revenue management to become this more of like an end-to-end -end technology platform, if I'm understanding correctly. Yep. What is next for the company? we to wrap yep. things up here. Yeah, definitely. So, so we, we are truly a platform, right? So things we're starting to see is that instead of building their own data infrastructure on, on top of, say, Snowflake, we have uh, airline customers that rely on our technology to kind of power all that data, warehousing yeah. strategy on the front end. Um, uh, we, um, we're seeing airlines adopt, like Avianca did, right, end-to-end -end our platform, where they're buying everything from the data layer to the revenue management and the offer management layer, all the way to the internet booking engine and distribution above that. Um, uh, and to do that, we, we acquired a bunch of companies, right? We, we, we looked at our, our business and we said, if we're the guys that help make decisions in the middle, so to say, we're in a really great position to help airlines also get those decisions in front of a customer, wherever they are, and help fulfill those decisions in kind of a still very legacy back office and reservation system environment. Lots of exciting things on the horizon. Alex, it's really been a pleasure. Uh, if you want to learn more about Flyer, you can head to Flyer Labs, F-L-Y-R Labs.com. Thank you Thanks, so much. Alex. Thank you.